Hi, this is Karen at Snickerdoodle Designs. Today we're going to take a look at how to save your document history in Photoshop. Have you ever, either as a designer or a layout artist, worked on a design or a scrapbook page? You really liked the final result, but then couldn't remember how you achieved it? I know that's happened to me before. Photoshop gives us a history panel to help us in situations like this. There's a lot we can do with the history panel, but today I'd like to just focus on one thing. One thing that's really easy to do, and one thing that I think can be really helpful to all of us. And that is how to save the history state of a document. And here are just a few things you need to know to get started. Let me go ahead and just delete this. If you do not have your history panel open like I do right here, you can go to the top menu bar, go to Window and History, and if you click on that, then this uh, panel will show up over here, and you can click on this tab to see what is taking place here. By default, Adobe saves 20 history states in order to save memory. If you would like to have more states uh, saved, you can reset that number by going to Edit, Preferences, and then Performance. And right over here, you can go ahead and hit uh, help change this to however many history states you'd like by clicking on the down pointing arrow. I have mine set at 50, and I do have a lot of memory on my computer, and I I don't have any problem um, at 50 states. I'm using Creative Cloud 2015. I know the path is slightly different in CS6, so I'm sure it's going to be different in other programs as well or other Photoshop versions as well. So just look for the history state. That's, that's what you want to, to find in order to go ahead and change that. Photoshop Elements users, you can set your history states as I have just described, but you will not be offered the option through PSC of actually saving your steps, which is uh, what I will cover in the rest of the tutorial. Before or immediately after opening a document, you need to set up Photoshop to record and save your working steps, and this is how to do that. I have already uh, opened a document and started recording this because I wanted to have these um, layers and history states available to show to you. So I'm going to recreate this, but just know that I have actually already started it. Pretend I have just opened a blank document. I would then go to Edit, Preferences, and history log and I think this is actually where the difference is in uh, the various versions of Photoshop. Once you click on the history log you can choose to save your log items either as a metadata file, a text file, or both. And I usually just select both. I have uh, clicked on choose right here and I have chosen to save my uh, text file on my desktop. It d gives it the default name of Photoshop Edit Log, and I have added the dash tutorial because I am using this log for this tutorial. You can rename it whatever you like. Down in the Edit Log items, you have uh, several options. You can have Detailed, Concise, and Sessions Only. Sessions Only will record just the basic session session information such as when you opened and closed a file. Concise will give you uh, more information on what actions you take, but detailed will give you the most data such as when you open and close files as well as the dates and the times of all the actions that you uh, use. And so I always choose that. I A text file doesn't take up much room and I think it's just easier uh, to have everything that uh, I might potentially need in the future. So now you are just ready to go ahead and work on your document and you can see I have already done this and so all of these actions will be have already been recorded on my document on the text document and on the metadata. 
you know, let me go back for just a minute to open a meta to read the file. If you have saved it as metadata, you will be able to read that in Adobe Bridge. Or if you want to use it to read it in Photoshop, you would go up to um, File and File Information. And then is located under this Photoshop right here. And this is all of the information for this layout that I have already been working on. So you can see I opened a new document. I drag some elements over and it goes all the way through and tells you just everything that I have done here. And if I had saved it in a text file, which I did also, I would just go to my desktop, find that text file, double click on it to open it, and it would open up um, in whatever text file program I have on my computer, which for me is Notepad, and I'm sure that most people have that. The Mac um, text notepad, which I would call a notepad, is I think it's called text edit. So the, one of the really cool things about this is I can go ahead and close this and reopen it and Adobe will find that text document and start recording again what I am doing in the second session. So once I've started creating that document, I don't need to, to uh, create it again. Adobe will just update it for me. Let's take a, a look, real quick look at the text document. And I think I can find it here, in my messy desktop. <laughs> And somebody that's watching this is probably saying, I see it, and I don't see it at the moment. So this is not good. Anybody see it? It's a text document. Here it is, way up at the top of my screen. That's why I didn't see it. So here it is, Photoshop Edit Log Tutorial. I'm going to double click on that. and it opened on my other screen so let me drag it over here and you can see that in this text document these are all the actions that I took and it's just the same as the metadata that we saw before and that's all there is to it it's just a really good way to uh, keep track of what we're doing so that if we do something and we don't remember exactly how to do it we can go back and find that um, those instructions again. So I hope you found this useful and um, we'll see you next week. Thanks for coming by.